This is the main event for WrestleMania this year. This is what almost was the main event for WrestleMania this year. And even with all that being said about the whole Cody Roman thing, I feel like Card is still always subject to change. With everything that has been going on throughout the course of trying to make this video, it shifted a lot on what it was supposed to be versus what it's becoming now. As I think, this is going to go down in history as one of the most talked about WrestleMania main events of all time for positive or negative reasons. But either way, it's still the topic of this episode. Because today... I want to give a big thank you to all my amazing Patreon supporters such as Ron Hawthorne, Mangy Stray, The Curry Garment, Mr. J, and The Reflection of Perfection. Thank you for all your support as you're helping to keep this channel going and all of you can help as well by signing up on my Patreon page. Okay, so let's recap everything that's happened up until this point. Three years ago, Roman Reigns starts a story that's all about family, the Hawaii family in particular. Two years after that, and Cody Rhodes comes up with the cute little catchphrase, finish the story, and he jobs at WrestleMania. A year after that, and The Rock says that he wants to sit at the head of the table, Cody wins the rumble, then steps aside to allow for The Rock to clear up all his family drama. And just listen to how angry those fans are. Yes! Anyway, a few hours later, and thanks to some help from the power of the internet, people start losing their minds. Cody gotta finish his story! <laughs> resulting in WWE having a press conference, which they sold tickets to, and some people bought for some inexplicable reason, and we got to see The Rock explain the concept of family to Cody Rhodes like he was some dumb blonde gorilla. When you talk about his family, you're talking about my family. Alright, I know I do a lot of history videos on this channel, but sometimes some things are better off documenting right as they happen, so you really remember what the people were talking about, what the fans were discussing, and this, in my opinion, is definitely one of them, especially since there's so much chatter going on, and one of the things most fans are talking about is the concept of whether or not this is a work. Okay, you have to admit that a lot of this is really convenient for WWE, because as soon as the allegations made against Vince McMahon started, well, this current round of allegations, magically The Rock swooped on in and everyone started talking about him instead of talking about Vince. And by hook or crook, a big star stepping into the spotlight for WrestleMania, even if he's quickly ousted out, is a conversation that TKO would probably prefer that fans had instead of talking about the things that Vince McMahon keeps close to the chest. <clears throat> Furthermore, there's a fair bit of evidence to suggest that WWE in the least should have seen this reaction coming, considering that they went through something very similar 10 years ago with Batista. And speaking of which, it is awfully coincidental that every round WrestleMania number has some sort of triple threat, except for 10 of course, but that had a weird convoluted almost tournament, but I'm sure if they did have triple threats back then, Luger, Brett, and Yoko would have had one to close the show instead. And also, let's remember the whole new Coke philosophy, except this time it's the classic that people want gone and it's the new version that people want in. Old and busted, new hotness. As there's some who would suggest that by having Cody Rhodes win the Royal Rumble for a second time, only to then deny him the main event at WrestleMania against Roman Reigns, that it was going to make the fans just want him even more because they were being denied, even if they just had this match last year. And so, there are some who think that The Rock was simply set up to take the bullet for Cody, and if that's so, well, mission very accomplished. But the reality is, no matter how many people out there are claiming to know what's really going on, the truth is us fans are really never going to be able to know for certain and that's perfectly okay. However, on the reverse side of things, there are those out there who feel that it has to be a work simply because they think there's no way it could be a shoot because they feel that no one would ever think to do this on purpose. Alright, so one reason that a lot of fans out there think that there's no way that this could possibly be a shoot is because they can't fathom that anyone would think The Rock winning was a good idea against Roman at Mania. Except that I could tell you for one, straight up, I thought this was a good idea. Which you can see from my video that I made last month. And even still, your average fan probably doesn't look at things from the business aspect, nor do they have to. However, the reality is, from a business standpoint, The Rock does make a lot of sense on paper. Now sure, this could be a 
prime example of the business types being so far removed from their fan base that they don't even know what's what anymore. Like the time that Hollywood thought people wanted to see movies with Ben Affleck and JLo in it. It means you're not my type. But as I've already previously stated, the strategy for this was sound. It was the execution that I think was the major misstep. And sure, maybe it could never have worked, no matter what they did. But if you remember, when The Rock first made his head of the table line, and when The Rock was first announced by Cody Rhodes, as you saw, the fans cheered. People were behind this. And sure, it was fleeting and temporary. And it is possible that the fans just don't love The Rock anymore, and that this was nothing more than a nostalgia pop. But I guess the one major trick that the wrestling business has up its sleeve is that you and I, the fans, will never really know for sure. Now regardless as to whether or not it was a work or a shoot from the start, I think we can all agree that from the kickoff going forward, everything was planned. Works don't have to be Machiavellian masterpieces from the beginning of time. Things can become a work when those in charge decide that things are not working. Maybe this was a sudden change in direction, and maybe this was as predetermined as the wrestling matches that we're talking about. But either way, this new angle has definitely changed things. But, has it been for the better? Alright, so the big thing is that nobody is suggesting that anything going forward since the beginning of the press conference is in any way, shape, or form legitimate. And if you are, I really want you to sit down with an adult and have them explain Santa Claus to you. But the major question is, is this pivot good recovery, or is this just a band-aid on a sinking submarine? Because as was true with Cody's Brock Lesnar feud, fans get really angry with things with the American Nightmare don't make sense or happen for no alleged reason. Which is why there were a lot of people who took issue with Cody Rhodes stepping aside for the Rock in the first place. However, when you stop to think about it, why would Cody let The Rock have the spot against Roman only to take it back right away? That makes no kayfabe sense either. But since it delivered an outcome that many fans wanted, well, the Cody crybabies really don't seem to be complaining about it all that much. But even furthermore to this, can we say that this is necessarily a good idea, when it is to a very small degree beginning to have a reverse effect, as the fickle nature of wrestling fans seem to be having some of them now siding with The Rock instead of the American Nightmare, which just goes to show that you could never please everybody, so you might as well just go ahead and do what you want anyway. And also, we should remember all the people who violently threatened The Rock's daughter. Even if they might be idle threats, nevertheless, should we be rewarding this kind of behavior? Are we not essentially just giving them what they wanted? And while The Rock Rock recently said on SmackDown that we had the main event of Roman vs. Rock in the palm of our hand and then we blew it, maybe it would have been better if things were on the reverse. Perhaps they should have just made it The Rock vs. Roman just to show those kind of fans that that is not how you respond to booking you don't like. All in all, I really want you to think about this. Is it good to acquiesce to what the fans demand? Are fans allowed to hijack creative? Are fans entitled to get what they want? And are fans entitled to find out what's going on behind the scenes? How transparent does WWE have to be with their audience? How much kayfabe exactly is left in a kayfabe -less world? Let's look at it this way. How many actual signs did you see on WWE TV that Cody was going to get his rematch against Roman Reigns? Once the American Nightmare began his feud with Brock Lesnar, Roman was seemingly out of the picture. Cody would then move on to the Judgment Day, and we would see nothing at all other than an awkward stare down as the two walked by each other, which was six months after Mania. And after that one exchange, not one hint was dropped until Cody won the Rumble again. But yet during all this time, so many fans persisted that Cody was going to finish the story. Some even asking if CM Punk possibly cost Cody Rhodes his main event that he was supposed to get. As if the act of dethroning Roman Reigns was Cody Rhodes' destiny. When again, there's been very little if any signs that WWE wanted to do that. And something similar can be seen with The Rock, because when he slapped Cody, a lot of fans were quick to jump and say that this was the return of Hollywood Rock, or the return of the corporate champion. And while it does seem that we're going into that direction now, during the kickoff press conference, The Rock just slapped him for mentioning his family. But it didn't change, the fans' headcanon pretty much wrote this into existence. And personally, I don't think fans should be filling in the gaps of a feud. If I wanted to do wrestling creative's work for them, I'd be watching AEW. Now the real juggling act here is that no matter what changes you make to make someone happy, you inevitably will make someone else unhappy instead. And so, well, what do you do? It's impossible to make all fans happy, and even the ones that you do make happy, it's not exactly easy to keep them happy for very long. As we have to wonder, is there any chance, if Cody does become champion at WrestleMania, that he'll stay as over as a babyface champion as Roman was over as a heel champion? Where does Cody go after winning the title? And is there any kind of goal afterwards?
Meanwhile, The Rock is famous famous, which carries a notoriety that other wrestlers in the business just don't have. And therefore, while The Rock might be a quick fix, it's at least one that does achieve its goal. Where with Cody, we're not entirely sure what his goal as champion would be, as the only thing that he really has writing for him is this entire idea of him finishing a story. But as Triple H said, it's wrestling, the story never finishes. Thus, if the only goal for Cody is finishing the story, that means his title reign was just a means to an end and not a new beginning. Plus, I also think that it needs to be said that it seems that most people haven't noticed that career-wise, this whole scenario is largely taking a giant step backwards for Cody, as he has, for the most part, finally made a name for himself. But as of late, you'll notice that just about every segment with him in it, someone is bringing up the American dream. And while it's not a big thing, I do think it's a little odd, and it's creating quite the shadow for Cody to have to step out from under, especially when we remember just how long it took him to outgrow Star dust. And so, I do feel the need to point out that while a lot of fans do want Cody to finish the story, the truth is, it was never really his story to begin with. And wouldn't Cody be much better off winning the belt for himself than anybody else? Okay, so with that story aside, there are other fans out there like myself who have said it numerous times, the story of The Rock vs. The Bloodline is one we haven't seen yet that I really want, especially for the promos alone. The Rock wants to know, you Roman Reigns, Claims to be sitting at the head of the table? Well, The Rock has to ask, is that the kiddies table? Cause The Rock remembers you in your little booster seat. Yeah, The Rock used to feed you mashed carrots and strained peas. And let The Rock tell you, those strained peas looked exactly the same going in as they did coming out. Yeah, The Rock knows, because The Rock used to change the tribal chief's Rudy Pooh candy ass. If you're some ma That's all I wanted, is that too much to ask for? Anyway, well, that sums up the whole bloody affair, at least up until this point. What happens next? Well, we're just gonna have to wait and see. So, I hope you liked this video. Please give it a like if you did, and also be sure that you're subscribed as a member of the Know-It-All Nation. And I want to give a big thank you to all my awesome Patreon supporters, and to you for watching. And as always, Dave knows.